That's a very special day. You know, not only we're back um, in Australia, but I'm excited that we're opening the first one and only hotel within Australia. And to be able to take over Hayman Island and really create this wonderful resort that's going to cater to Australians and families and international guests, we're just so excited about it. When you were running the Ritz-Carlton Double Bay back in the early 1990s, did you ever think you'd be uh, here at branding Hayman Island at some point? First of all, I always wondered, could I afford to be here? So not only is it nice to be here, but to be able to take over this iconic resort. You know, Hayman has got a great a place in Australians' hearts. I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to that's had weddings here, that have had anniversaries here. And to come back here and see what we've done to make it this really elegant, relaxed resort, um, I'm very excited about it. Um, almost every luxury brand or even higher than luxury brand would have been chasing to put a name on this uh, resort at some point during its lifetime and you must feel very special that Molf has uh, engaged Kersner to, to come here and, and, and do a, what is a magical product now. We've been very proud of it. You know, a lot of times I hear, and it's a small industry, so we hear, God, I would have loved to have that property or we wonder how you got that deal. And I think it really is the envy of a lot of ultra luxury resorts that we have, Heyman. And I think that speaks to the relationship that um, the owners have developed with me. Sangwon's real commitment as an owner to develop quality and to be passionate. You know, he started out saying, listen, we'd spend $50 million. We ended up spending $80 million in the resort to bring it up to this quality and standard. And I think that's, um, that's the excitement. We have committed owners. We're very committed. You know, I have my most senior leadership team in here. A lot of them have been here through the development. They're now staying through the open and post opening to ensure that we can give great service, good quality, you know, we have wonderful food, great products from Australia, so we're very excited about welcoming guests today. And it's uh, obviously the Australian market's a very exciting outbound market for all of your properties, so this is a great branding exercise for you at the same time, isn't it? It's fantastic. You know, first of all, we're very fortunate. We have a lot of good Australian guests that travel internationally and stay at our hotels, but I'm very excited because a lot of them say, listen, we'd love to have a place close to home, we'd love to have a place that's got great service, and I'm very excited about the Australian Australians, we have servicing our guests here, and then we've got such a great resort that's close to, um, to home for the Australians that they can come here. But more importantly, I don't know of a resort that offers the ultra luxury for families. And you know, we built this wonderful family pool, so we've got these quiet spots, we've got the family pool, we've got fitness and dining. I think people are going to be delighted to come back and see what's been happening here. And uh, lots of opportunities around the world. Where do you see the company in the next five to seven years? Would you have properties in Miami, in New York, and Hawaii? Would you be in London? Where do you see it? Listen, we continue to grow smartly and look at the right locations. We're never going to be a major um, hotel with um, many hotels throughout the world. I think, you know, we'd like to see ourselves 15 to 20 hotels over time. And yes, you know, we look for the most unique locations in the world. We're very excited about Montenegro that's going to be open, which is a Jean-Michel Gatti design. Um, Sanya in China is um, going to be opening in the end of 2016. And then we've got quite a few things. And listen, one day we'd love to be in a London, New York or Paris. Where do you see on the large scale of, of, of opportunities as well in terms of your, your bigger results, not your one and only? Do you see a lot of potential there, particularly within China? Yeah, so China is very exciting for us. We're opening the first um, Atlantis in, uh, in Sanya, which is a 1,500-room key hotel, great big attractions, um, wonderful restaurants and um, dolphin shows, marine habitats. So those are exciting. And then I think there are a couple other locations. You know, I love Mexico potentially for one. I think Indonesia could be potentially for an Atlantis. I mean, I think we're very focused on making sure we get the right locations, we have the right commitment from our partners to do it, and I definitely think we'll see some more Atlantises. You, you tend to fly under the radar a lot when it comes to the Atlantis brand. I mean, every other uh, company that has casinos around the world is, is, is making big, loud statements, and you tend to fly under the radar. Is it is that, is that what Kersner is all about, do you think, to a degree? Yeah, I think, listen, I think we let our guests speak for itself. We're very fortunate. In most of the markets we operate, both the Atlantis and the one and onlys, we are up, um, run the highest average rates, we run pretty much the highest occupancies, and I think, listen, we're very entrepreneurial, we're very hands-on, we're into driving our businesses, making sure we look after our employees and our guests, and we let them speak for our, for let them speak for our product. And uh, last but not least, top three opportunities and, and uh, top three challenges for you this year? Uh, I think the biggest challenge for me is continuing to find very talented, passionate staff that are committed to being in the hospitality business. And I think the big things ahead of us, we've got the opening of Atlantis, China, Montenegro and Sonia.